you have that permission to do so, will you give yourself permission to surrender and to go to him? To bring these things that we're talking about, because I know as I'm sitting here talking, some of you are going, oh yeah, I know what he said, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that to Christ. Give yourself permission to surrender to Christ. Let him give you the strength to be able to overcome or to break things into the right perspective or to clean some things up so they're, it's now in the all right category and not the wrong. I hope this made sense to you, some of you. I know, I know, I learned right before church that this was a reason why this was being spoken tonight. Uh, confirmation beyond measure. Uh, so I hope it is for some of you also. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, it's this battle with sin. Really, it's boiling down to the battle with flesh. Lord, I know everyone that sits here wants to be right with you, wants to walk with you, wants to you know, admire you and all that you have, and wants to honor you with our actions and with our voice and with our finances and with everything, Lord. We just want to surrender to you. We wouldn't come out here tonight, Lord. This place would be empty, except people want to come out and to give you praise and glory and receive from you, Lord. But Lord, we admit that there are struggles in life. That this idea of flesh and giving yourself permission to participate in it, that's not, that's not adequate. That's not what you desire. So Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us to give ourselves permission to surrender some of those things. To release some of those things. And Lord, that we realize that you give us permission to come to you. That even before, Lord, even before you knew us, you knew we were going to be sinners. And Lord, you died on that cross for us. So Heavenly Father, help us to understand that. Holy Spirit, keep reminding us that we have permission to bring our struggles to you. And you don't need us perfect, you just need us. Heavenly Father, we need you. Boy, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you speak this into people's hearts the way they need to hear it. I, just, I feel so inadequate to pass this on in a way that everyone can get it. I pray that they do, Lord. But Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would speak into their lives and that there would be just a, a revival of a desire, Lord, to give you more of us and to clean up areas of our life. And Lord, just to walk the way you want us to walk and to realize, most importantly, that when a temptation comes, you give us a way out every time. We can't blame Satan. He's only as big as we allow him to be, Lord. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you give us that knowledge and that reminder that we have a way out. And that we'll choose that way, Lord. We'll choose that way. I ask us all in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. So when is going to be church on Easter? Is it going to be Sunday evening? No. no. What time is it going to be on Sunday? Yeah. And are we going to have any kind of meal that day? Is it going to be a supper? No. Going to be a breakfast? Yes. And what time is that going to be at? Either. Until what? Nine. Should you come right at 9.29 and a half to have your, your lunch? No. Your breakfast? No. Come early. We just want to have a little bit of time to clean up so everyone can come up at the same time. So if you can make it, please do so. Anything else right off the top? Again, the movie, uh, Breakthrough, if you want to buy a ticket, they're $10. We can give you a ticket for that. Um, also on Tuesday, if you go to the movie Unplanned, please do. Please do so that you have an awareness and an education about what's taking place. All right? God bless the Keep worship team. Just stick around long enough, you'll catch what you're looking for. I'm um, just going to take a moment to talk about Easter. Uh, Easter weekend, we are not going to have an Easter evening service. We're going to do like last year. We're going to have Easter breakfast service. So from 8.30 to 9.30, right? On Easter morning, we're going to have breakfast. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll have our service. Last year, we had the guys... Um, serve and, and do the cooking. We're going to ask that that same uh, takes course because nobody passed out or everyone seemed to do just fine. So uh, we're going to see if the guys would go ahead and help us cook that. But again, it'll be at 8 30, 9 30 in the morning, no evening service on Easter. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do is pass out a couple of uh, clipboards. Yeah, service starts at 10. Yes. So if you want to sign up for anything to help with that, guys, that'd be great. Then also we're uh, going to do our crosswalk again. We didn't do it last year. The weather was kind of iffy, and it was also like, what, April 1st or whatever. So we're going to do our crosswalk. We start at the pavilion, and we walk across out here. It takes about four or five hours. Um, how many of you have done that in the past? And how many of you will do it again, hopefully? A lot of people. So it's about four or five hours. So what we're looking at is just if you want to sign up for that. You don't have to do the whole walk. It's about, what is it, 16 miles or so, I think. You don't have to walk the whole thing if you want to walk for a mile, and that's it. If you want to ride and just tag along, we have goodies out there. we got water and whatnot. We always encourage safety, so parents, if you're going to have your children walk, we want to make sure that you're responsible and 
keep an eye on them. It is Highway 34, after all. And uh, the 60 just means kind of a minimum, usually, for the speed limit. So just keep that in mind. So I'm um, just going to have you sign up, just so we get an idea about how many people might be walking. We'll meet at the church at 11. 11, and then we uh, go into town and we start the pavilion and we walk out. There, we'll have a vehicle there if you need to use the bathroom. We'll get you to a bathroom. If you need to just rest. We've got that available. So uh, it seems to be, it's been an event that we've done for several years, many years actually. I think Raymond, you've been probably on every one, haven't you? Yep. Uh, and so I encourage you to do that. It's a great way of celebrating. And then also let me know about Friday evening. If you want to have a small service here, we'd be glad to do that too. But give me a, some feedback about that if you'd like to have a a Friday evening service on that. This is an interesting sermon. I need more prayer. This is an interesting sermon um, only because it's just sometimes when the Holy Spirit gives me a sermon and I'm writing it out, sometimes I'm like, man, this is so smooth. This is so awesome. This one was like, are you sure? Is this really how you want to do it? Um, but I've already had confirmation that it's what he wants and why he wants it. So you shouldn't question the Holy Spirit. Just tell him that, okay? He knows better. But uh, I'm going to, I pray that, my prayer was just that he'll use me, but my prayer is that you'll receive what he's saying in the way that makes better sense than I'm probably going to say it. I, I know he can do that, uh, interpret it for you in the best of ways. But it's called, Yes, I Have Permission. Yes, I Have Permission. So I was thinking back when I went to, uh, I went to Rossman. Any Rossman elementary people there? Oh, honey, really? Oh, we're probably so close, probably in the hallways. Uh, getting milk. So I went to Rossman, then I went to Holmes Junior High, which most of us, if you live in Detroit Lakes, did because it's been around forever. And then I went to Detroit Lakes Senior High. So I did all my years in Detroit Lakes. And I was thinking back, sometimes I give teachers a rough time because they gave me a rough time, and I don't know why. But the point was is that I oftentimes give them a rough time. But I came to realize that really the teachers all through my school career respected me highly. It, it, they really, you guys look shocked. They really did. <laughs> and I know that because they always called me Mr. Erickson. <laughs> All the time. And I didn't realize until just this week about how much respect they had for me. And so I started thinking about it. But yeah, they would say like, Mr. Erickson, can you leave my classroom? They would say it so nice. Uh, Mr. Erickson, can you go sit in the back of the class? I, that happened a lot. Uh, Mr. Erickson, you can quit staring at Miss Bird. I had that happen too over the, the junior high. Mr. Erickson, you can walk yourself down to the principal's office. Anyone, they trust me that much. <laughs> the thing was, is before long, it was the slowest walk in the world. I don't know why I walked so slow at that time. And before long, the principal would, he'd see it pop his head out and he'd say, Get down here, Mr. Erickson. And so I'd go down there and he'd talk with me. We had, had a personal conversations with him a lot. And I realized that the question that often came with from Mr. Erickson was, do you have permission? Do you have permission to be out here in the hall, Mr. Erickson? Do you have permission to be hanging out in the gym? Do you have permission to be out of the class? Do you have permission to be off the school grounds? Do you have permission to be talking in class, to laugh in class, to distract the class? Sometimes it was, do you have permission to be in the class? Because sometimes I went and sat in someone else's class because I liked the class. Um, <laughs> Eventually, they'd realize I was in there and kicked me out. Mr. Erickson, you need to leave. Yes. So do you have permission? Oftentimes, I came with that. Now, I looked at permission. It says it's a consent. It's an authorization. In other words, I consent to letting you do something, or I'm authorizing you that you can do that. I'm allowing something to happen is another way. The synonyms of, of it is approval or allowance or a blessing. You know, you have my blessing. Go and do this or that, right? Now, that's more formal. I've never been very formal with it. My kind of language is, you got to go ahead. You got to go ahead. You ever hear that one? You got the thumbs up. Two thumbs up even sometimes. You get the green light. You got the green light. Go ahead. You got to say so. You got to say so. So a lot of times in life, we get permission in a lot of different ways and a lot of different things. Um, the, the teachers, you know, they always ask me if I got permission. And usually they didn't give me permission to do a lot of things I did. Seems to be why they called me Mr. Erickson a lot and why I walked out of the office uh, quite a few times. The interesting thing was, you know, sometimes I actually had permission. And that was interesting because if I had permission to be somewhere, and of course they saw Mr. Erickson, let's say, hanging out in the library, they'd come and say, Mr. Erickson, are you supposed to be out here in the library? And I'd say, yes, so-and-so teacher uh, said I could be here. And guess what they did? 
and go over to the phone. Just stay right here, Mr. Erickson. Uh, yeah, Mr. Erickson's down here in the library. Is he supposed to be down here? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. But you can't blame me for calling and asking, right? It's Mr. Erickson after all. All right. They hang up and say, all right, you can stay here, but I'm watching you. That kind of stuff, right? <laughs> so it was a struggle sometimes with this whole idea of getting permission. So when they asked me, Mr. Erickson, do you have permission? There was a, such a part of me that wanted to well up and say, I do. I gave myself permission. I want to go do this. I, I said, blessings to you, Brian. I authorized Brian. I said, thumbs up, Brian. I said, go for it, Brian. How many of us have ever done that in life? Something we want to do, we give ourselves permission to do. Now, it's not always wrong. I mean, let's say there's a pair of jeans and it's a little more expensive than you're used to paying, but you're just feeling like, I really like those jeans, and so you give yourself permission to spend a little bit more on it. There's that kind of permission going on. But in life, a lot of times, there's a lot of different kinds of permissions that we have to go about. I mean, if you go hunting a lot of times, you've got to ask permission from the landowner. It's interesting, I once went to... A, Charlie Rue's farm, and I said, can I go hunting on your land? Can I have permission? And he said, no. And I said, well, come on, Mr. Charlie Rue. Please let me go. I'm Mr. Erickson, after all, right? And he said, you know what? I'll tell you what, Brian. He said, you can go, just don't shoot a buck. You can shoot a doe, but do not shoot a buck. Can you stand with that rule? And I said, oh, yeah, of course. Because at that moment, it's like, the chance of me seeing a buck's probably pretty small. No problem, Mr. Charlie Rue. So I go up on my the big hill where I'm going to sit, and I'm not there even five minutes, and I'm here. And it's coming my way. And around the corner, I wasn't even there five minutes, came a very nice buck. And he stood there and looked at me. Now, Charlie gave me permission to hunt there. Now I have to decide, am I going to give myself permission to shoot this buck? And so I'm sitting there looking at it, and this, you know, I've got Satan on one side, and he's this great big thing just at this moment, and, and I know that I shouldn't do it, because I said I wouldn't, but here it is. Now, Charlie's way down the hill, he's an old man, he's never going to come running up here, he's going to hear the shot and then come and chase me down. It's a hundred yards to my uncle's place, I can do this thing, I can do this thing. Should I give myself permission? And so, I finally decided I couldn't. I don't know what happened inside me, this... Well, this welling up of rightness came upon me. And I said, get out of here before I kill you. And he ran about 50 yards away and stopped broadside and stared at me some more. <laughs> he's now on my wall. No, he's not. <laughs> I screamed at him again and he finally took off. How many of us have been in that situation where we have the opportunity to make the right choice or the wrong choice, it just depends on if we'll give ourselves permission to cross the line or not. I see heads nodding. Yes. I'm not the only one. Did you hunt on Charlie Roos too? I tell you what. Isn't it interesting how Satan did that though? Or maybe it was God. Maybe he said, you know what, Brian, we're going to test you a little bit. All I know is I passed the test, never got a deer, wanted to go back and relive that because I would have blasted that thing. I had the chance. And so this whole idea of giving ourselves permission... Um, I just got to confess this. How many of you were here for the sermon when I said Sandy has been hiding the malted milk ball Easter eggs at my house? She rations me. I don't know where she gave them out, but she'll come out with a dish of about five of them and set them down. And that's my, that's my little num-nums for a little while. And then she goes off somewhere else and the bag's gone again. I don't know where she... I haven't even looked. But I gave myself permission when I was at Unlun -Un Fleet to buy my own bag of eggs. So in my pickup right now, I have me a bag of malted milk ball eggs, and I give myself permission quite often to dig in that bag. Uh, so there's a way around it. See, how many times in life do we find ourselves around something? That we tweak it, or we maneuver it, or we manipulate, whatever it is, so that we can have what we want, because we want to give ourselves permission to have it. The problem is, is like these songs that we're singing, we need God and His strength to stay on the right path. Because of our flesh, we will start to choose the wrong things to do. We'll start to allow ourselves to get into some things we shouldn't get into. Anyone get an amen on that one? Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're on the right spot. Absolutely. It's the struggle that we have. We are so willing to give ourselves permission, and it's usually in the wrong area. We give our flesh the green light. Satan will always give us a hallelujah, thumbs up, brother. That's a good choice. 
He's always right there behind us saying, you know what, I like the way you're thinking. And he might give us the, the hint of something to do. He might give us that little bit of drop of temptation, but then it's up to us to either take it, process it, and kick it out. No, thank you. Or we say, you know what? Yeah, I give myself permission. I, I consent to it. I give you, Brian, the authorization to do these things. You get the green light, the thumbs up. It's all good. Let's go for it. The problem is that we usually end up on the wrong side of the tracks on that one, don't we? And so the struggle we have, my friends, is to realize that we can make choices and God has given us that opportunity to have free will. And that free will really says you're going to have the opportunity to give yourself permission to do the right things or to do the wrong things. It's that battle that takes place in John 10.10 10 all the time. It's that battle of good and evil that we struggle with sometimes. Now Satan himself knows all about permission, doesn't he? He has to ask permission from God to take her with Job, didn't he? He has to realize that he's more or less a lackey. He doesn't think so. He thought he was going to win when the cross was there, but he lost. John 12, 31 says that Satan is, is the ruler of this world, but it's just for a season. In other words, God's allowing him to be ruling in this world. God's allowing him to be out and about doing his business. But God is still in charge, isn't he? But the struggle is, is that Satan likes to come into and speak to our flesh. He likes to destroy what we're thinking. We're talking about this movie, Unplanned, about abortion and whatnot. He is all behind that stuff. He loves that stuff. But we also read in Daniel 4, 17, it says, The most high rules in the kingdom of men, he gives it to whomever he will. God does give Satan the ability right now to travel to and fro, seeking to devour and to destroy those of us that are willing to end up in that path. See, we don't have to give Satan permission to do anything in our life. With God and with the strength that we just sang about, we can overcome that temptation, can't we? But it's that we have to give him permission to be bigger in our life than he should be because we say, you know what, I, I like what you're talking about. I like what you're thinking. Man, you, are, you and me, are, we're on the same page right here. We find ourselves struggling with whatever Satan is whispering into our ear or whatever our flesh is screaming into our minds that we should do. Mark 1.27 says, even the unclean spirits obey Jesus. In other words, we know that Jesus is in charge. So if we know Jesus is in charge, we have to realize that we have the strength in Christ to be able to overcome these things. So if we find ourselves in sin, who do we got to blame? Ourselves. Oh, Satan's out there and he's trying to get us to cross the other side. But he doesn't have the power to do that unless we surrender and give him permission to take us there. And that's the struggle that we have, my friends. Is that we know the truth, we know what we should be doing, but we find ourselves doing what we shouldn't do because we like it or because we've said, it's okay, let's go for it. Satan himself had to ask permission to harm Job in Job 1, uh, chapter 1. But the interesting thing is, it says that Job was found blameless and upright. So he couldn't touch Job because Job was blameless and upright in God's eyes. So he had to ask permission, God, can I mess with this dude? He's rich and he's got all these things. That's the only reason why he, he comes about you. That's the only reason why he's honoring you. But let me take that stuff away from him and he will crack and he'll curse you. And God said, you know what? I'll let you take his stuff, but you can't touch his body. So he took all his stuff. He had some bad days. He lost everything, family, everything. But he didn't crack. He didn't curse God. So Satan had to go back and say, you know what, uh, how about let me mess with his body? You know, if I can give him boils and all these different things, he will curse you. Fine, you can have his body, but don't kill him. See, God can give permission, but this man was upright in God's eyes, and so God had control and a hedge of protection around him. What I'm talking about is when we're walking in life, when we by ourselves walk off into Satan land, and God isn't going to protect us at that moment because we've chosen to go out and to do some bad things. Satan doesn't really need to talk to anyone about that because we're volunteered. Hey, sign me up. Sign me up for the sin. Sign me up for the flesh party. I'm here. We do it all by ourselves just fine. We do it all by ourselves just fine. And then Satan begins to whisper in our ear about shame and guilt and dishonor. And how could you do this? And how could you do that? And before long, you don't want to ever ask permission to come back to God because you feel you don't have the right to. And then Satan has us right where we wherever he wants us. Guess what we do then? More of the same. Because there's no hope. There's no future. I've, I've blown it with God. I, he could never take me back. That's one of the biggest lies that Satan whispers into our ears. That 
We're never going to be good enough. God could never take us back. But David tells us a different story, doesn't he, in Psalm 51, when he goes before God and repents and receives all that God had for him again. But that's the issue we have is, will we accept that permission that God says, come to me, come to me, come to me. I give you permission to come to me time and time again if you need it. I am here for you. I want to give you all that you need. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 through 16 speaks about temptation. So if you're sitting out here saying, well, Brian, man, I want to beat temptation. But I tell you what, it's, too, it's just too powerful. It's just, I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 through 16 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. How many of you think you're the only one that's ever done a certain kind of sin? I must be the worst of the worst because I did this thing. It's all common to man. Times past, today, in the future. We all sin. We all fall short in the eyes of God. But thank God, what we're going to be celebrating on that cross is that He takes and cleanses us. He pays that price. He cleans us up. He gets us to where we need to be with Him. But it says, No temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. But God, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear. We're going to be tempted, brothers and sisters. We're going to be faced with all kinds of temptation, but he's saying with God, he gives us a way out. He, he will never give us more than we can bear. We can't say, I couldn't stay away from the temptation because it was more than I could bear, God. He says, that's not true. I can give you a way out if you'll just call upon me and take the strength I have to avoid it. But we've got to do that. We've got to do that. We came to realize that we're going to be tempted, but we also realize that we have the power through Christ to not fall into it. That there is a way of escape each and every time. We've shared before about just before you do that wrong thing, the Holy Spirit screams, don't do it. You know that you know that you know that you're at a point of no return. Do not cross the line, please, he says. Anyone ever been there? And the next thing you do is you find yourself possibly crossing the line. We now realize that it's not by uh, our inability because Satan is so powerful. It's because of our choice. Because we volunteered, we gave permission to jump to the wrong side. When Christ is giving us permission to look to Him for the strength that we need to overcome that. With every temptation, I will give you a way out. Too many times we don't look for that way out because that way out usually means we can't do the sin. <laughs> I don't like that. So we delve into the sin. What do they say? It's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. You ever hear that one? I wonder if we live that way sometimes. Well, you know what? This is the chance of a lifetime. and go for it. And, you know, I'll talk to God on Sunday. We'll make this thing right. You think that works for God? But yet we do it anyway. It's so interesting. When we fall into temptation, when we do these things, we say, as long as no one catches me, as long as no one sees me doing it, it's okay. I'm okay. Woof. Woof. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. You think somebody saw it? Who? The person that makes the most difference of all, if he sees it or not, God. But Satan's got us believing that if we can get away from it, see, Kevin and Francie don't know. They don't know, so it's all good. But it's not all good. Because God knows. David says, against you alone have I sinned, God. Against you alone, he's saying, I, you know, other people might be infected, but you know what, it's you that I need to look for, God. It's you that I need to talk to. It's you that I need to pay the price with. It's you that I need to come before and say, I've done this wrong. But too many times, because we think we're getting away with something, it's very hard to let it go. We give ourselves permission over and over and over again when we shouldn't be doing that whatsoever. We need to be able to resist it, to not give it permission. But we ourselves oftentimes are the ones to give it. Again, we give it the thumbs up. We give it the blessing. We give it the authority. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 says this, my friends. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Laden meaning heavily loaded or weighed down. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That word rest is a big word. 
four letters but a huge word because if we're living apart from God, if we're living in sin, if we're doing these things that we know God does not agree with, there is a heavy weight that weighs on us because Satan doesn't just allow us to do it. He's excited about us doing it, but then he curses us and blames us and guilts us through the whole process. Everyone ever feel that heavy weight? You carry it around and you're like, oh Lord, I failed. I don't want to fail anymore. We find ourselves failing again and failing again. And before long, Satan's saying, you know what? You're so messed up. It's never, you're never going to get out of it. That's heavy laden. Those of us that labor in life trying to do well, but we find ourselves failing. He says, come to me. Come to me. He's giving us permission. Come to me with your problems, people. Come to me with your sin. Come to me with your dirt. Come to me with your disgust. I'm here for you. I want to pick you up. I want to make your life better. I want to give you peace. Too many of us live in this world with no peace because we're living in this world as if we don't have God in our lives. It's a very unrestful time. And if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're in the midst of that, it is a really unrestful time. Your spirit isn't comfortable. You know that you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and the Holy Spirit says you need to make it right. And so Christ says, why don't you come to me? Where else do we go? We can't go anywhere else. We shouldn't go anywhere else but Christ. He gives us permission. He gives us authority. He gives us the thumbs up. He gives us the green light to come to me with your burdens. Come to me with your sin. Let me clean you up and make you right again. He wants us to come to him. He doesn't say, don't come to me until you're cleaned up. Don't come to me until you're spotless. He wants to find us in our filth and our dirt. He'll meet us where we're at and bring us to where he wants us to be. So if you find yourself in that mode where you're down in the dirt, you're down in the, the slime and the filth, he wants to come right where you're at, pick you up, clean you up, and bring you to where he wants you to be. So many people think, I've got to be there. I've got to have it made. I've got to be somehow cleaned up and perfect before I can ever walk into a church. Well, that's just foolish. Because everyone in the church is full of dirt and grime. You'll get yourself built here yet. Because we're all struggling. Because we're all human. Because we all need Jesus Christ and we need the strength that comes from the cross. We need the gift that He gives us, cleansing us and, and nurturing us and giving us that peace that we look for. You know, John 10.10 10 is not a, just a joke. He comes, Satan comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. Peace is one of the greatest things that He steals from us. I sit across and talk with people and they're just full of unrest because their lives aren't where they know it should be. Oh, they know what should be over here, but they aren't choosing to make choices to be over there because they're giving themselves permission to be in other things. And so we've got to take a look at that, my friends. I do not believe I'm the only one that struggles in life. If I am, then everyone else should be up here and I should be sitting out there, but I'm just a human being too. I mess up. I sin. I find myself not in peace. Because I don't want, I'm where I shouldn't be or I'm, you know, up to here in it when I shouldn't be up to there in it. And so I want to encourage you, if you're sitting out here saying, you know what, I'm messing up in life, I've got some problems in life, well, you're in the right spot, because we all do, and that's why we come to Jesus Christ. So Satan, you're a liar, liar, pants on fire. Jesus Christ wants to love you. He wants to love you and clean you up. He wants to forgive you. He wants to ask you to repent. He wants you to quit doing those things because he wants you to be all that he has for you. We think about David. David was a man after God's own heart because he would do what God wanted him to do and now we realize that David fell into adultery. Then he fell into lying. Then he fell into murder. See, sin begat, sin begat, sin. It starts out small. Before long you might find yourself you know, about this deep in it. Please don't make any more waves. Right? We find ourselves begatting sin. This sin begat that one, begat that one, begat that one. Another way of looking at it is those that are into drugs or alcohol, especially drugs. You know, it's the gateway drug. I, I, you know, I smoked a little pot. Then I got this. Then I got that. Then I got this. Then I got that. Now I'm, you know, knee deep. I'm, you know, drowning in it. Alcohol's the same way. Oh, I had my first. The first beer I ever had was uh, Dennis Sunderberg on his farm. It was about 8,000 degrees because you can't pay unless it's 8,000 degrees out. <laughs> And so we hate it all day long. In fact, where Lloyd and Ruby lived, we hate that whole field all day long. And then we finally got done, and we got to ride the hay racks back to Burgess. Now, it's interesting. Today's, they probably want you to have a helmet on, because you're on that hay rack, you know, that's rocked about six feet every which way, going down the highway to Burgess. 
We get there and I think, you know, oh, the day is finally done. Thank you. Now we've got to put it in the hay mile, which is 9,000 degrees. So we finally get that all done, and I'm thinking, oh, just let me get home. I, I just went there. I rode my bike there just to see what was going on, and now I'm haying. <laughs> so now we're in Fergus, and we get all done with that, and he says, now there's some more bales out in the field by Fergus. But we go out there, and there's a shade tree, and they bring out a beer. And I've never had a beer in my life. And they gave me that beer, and it tasted like nectar. Nectar from the gods. That might have been my first beer, but before long it could have been another one, and another one, and harder stuff, and harder stuff. In other words, oftentimes when we do things, we like I had one Easter egg with Sandy. She gave me five Easter eggs. Now I got a whole bag. I'm like, I can catch them. I can toss them behind my back and get them in the car. while I'm driving. It's awesome. I got the Easter egg I guess, man. No, no. Oftentimes when we fall into sin, it starts out maybe small. Because Satan gets us to cross that line just a little bit. Well, this isn't that bad. But my friends, before long, you can be getting all kinds of stuff. But Satan wants you to destroy you, but Christ is still there. There's nothing new under the sun, Solomon says. We've, he's, you know, we, can, we can do this with Christ. He's there for us. He doesn't say, oh my gosh, I've never heard this sin before. I don't know how to deal with this one. That's not him. It's us, but it's not him. I want to read out of Galatians because it's important to realize there's two different sets of who we can be. We can give ourselves permission to be in one of the flesh, or we can give ourselves permission to receive what Christ has for us because he gives us permission to receive it. In Galatians uh, 5 or 6.19, I'm sorry, or 5.19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Does it sound like that's godly kind of stuff? Does it sound like you would have to give yourself permission to jump into that side of the boat? Absolutely, we would have to choose to do that. But we just learned not long ago that we don't have to fall into any of that because we have the strength of Jesus Christ and He gives us a way out when we are tempted to go back into that pile of flesh. But oftentimes we choose not to. We choose not to. So here comes Christ giving us permission for this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, ending one another. Which one do you want to be in? The flesh or the Spirit? Unspeakable joy one! That one too. Yes. That's, he's done that twice today now. He did it for one too. Man. We've all walked in the first aspect of the flesh, and we find ourselves dabbling with that even today. But how many of us would rather walk in the Spirit to be in that love and joy and peace and self-control, that peace that passes all understanding that only comes from Christ? Oh, I tell you what. But we talk about, you know, before we knew Christ, we're into sin, and now we accept Jesus Christ, and they say the old man is dead, the new man has come. The problem with a lot of us is that we're actually first aid providers. Because when that old man is dead, we go back and revive him. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Oh, he's up and at him again. Back in the flesh. Let the old man die. Well, how do we do that? By the choices that we make. There was a gal, I want to read this. Uh, she was a Fox News consultant. Uh, what was her name? Elizabeth ha Hasselbeck. Uh, she was a kind of a thinner blonde gal, and she ended up getting cancer. She was on the View for a while. That show, wow, well, who would ever go on that? I don't know. But she was on there doing her best, battling. Uh, didn't do well, and that kind of has caught up with her lately. But she had cancer and stuff, and so she was this single. She was a mom, and she had kids. But she was at this Fox News. She finally had landed all that she could imagine to have. To be an anchor on Fox News is a big deal. And so she was doing her best to take care of that job, but that job was taking care of her because she would put more and more hours in it. Not that she couldn't do it, but she never could do it well enough for herself. So her home suffered, her children suffered, her marriage suffered. 
and she couldn't give it up. Well, finally she had to go in for surgery to do a check for cancer. She did not have it, I believe. But they put her in her an simple anesthesia. She should be out in no time. She slept for 10 hours. Her body was shocked. They had to wake her up. They thought she was going to die, and she couldn't wake up because she was so fatigued. So she finally got back, and her husband says, you know what, you sure you want to go back to work? Oh, yeah, I've learned my lesson now. How many of you can say that? I've learned my lesson. So she went back to work, and before long, she was doing the exact same thing. So she finally said she called out to Christ, and here's what she said. She said, Psalms 121 says this, I cried to the Lord, and he heard me. And here's what she said. God gave me permission to do what I would have never have given myself permission to do. He gave me the permission to walk away and leave something that was great, just not great for me. Too many of us are living our lives trying to do the American dream or keep up with the Joneses who are here, in fact. <laughs> you always wondered who the Joneses were? Well, they come to Cowboy Church, so <laughs> you talk to them about all this stuff, all right? But the point is, is that she was able to realize that even things that are good, that seem good, take us to where we shouldn't be. It's great stuff, just not great for me. And too many times we have taken sin and we say, this sin is great. Man, I love this sin. I don't want to give this sin up. Oh, you cute, cute, cute little sin. Oh, I'll give up this. I'll give up, you know, eating beets. I'll give up, you know, eating you know, turkey legs. I'll, I'll do all that. That's sinful because it gets me, you know, my heart's getting cholesterol and stuff. But I don't want to give up this sin. This sin is so wonderful. So wonderful. But we got to give up some of those sins too. Because we think it's great, but it's just not great for us. Satan comes with all kinds of things to sneak in into our lives and to say it's no big deal. But it is a big deal. God gives us permission to come to the cross. With all our troubles, with all our dirt, with all everything that we bring, he, he says, come, come to me. Come to me. 